Uh, let's check the big board in the Dow 30. We've been trying to gain some traction. Not much luck. We've just been pretty much where we've been for the last couple of hours. The Dow up 12 points at 26,554. Let's bring in our resident bull by the name of Ryan Payne. I think he plays. You play guitar. You're in a band. I know that. <laughs> President of Payne Capital Management, Ryan. You're playing a happy tune for the market because you say it's just... A, no matter what the so-called experts say, the doom and gloom, yes. GDP number was the latest example of how the so-called experts are not getting it right. Yeah, we like to use that in quotes, right, experts. <laughs> <laughs> right. I think this is just a glaring example of how Wall Street is always, usually wrong, I should say. Not always wrong, not but always. usually wrong. Right. Um, you know, they really missed the mark on GDP. Like you said, it was lights out with GDP for the first quarter at 3.2%. Um, the other thing is earnings. I mean, earnings have just been phenomenal so far this season. And the same thing, you know, every analyst on Wall Street thought we were going to have an earnings recession this quarter, mm. and they were wrong about that, too. So you have two really big misses in terms of where the projections are for stocks and the economy uh, are going, which is, you know, interesting. Yeah, and continuing to whatever, go up, melt up, whatever you want to call it. But those so-called experts are now saying, <laughs> well, OK, this was maybe a, an outlier that they do expect the economy to slow down and are predicting maybe a 1.5% growth number for the second quarter. How wrong are they? Right. It's like it's, it's OK to be wrong, but it's not OK to stay wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's, it, that's exactly what you're saying. Uh, Morgan Stanley came out and said second quarter GDP should slow down. Um, right. And that, that was a big one. And then the big money um, poll that came out from Barron's this weekend had mm. most money managers uh, like 51 percent were bearish. The first time that we've had that many bearish was around the, the election in and November what's that 2016. Based on, do you think? Um, I think it's mainly on sentiment. And I think, you know, there's there's an old saying that bull markets climb of wall worry. Yep. Um, and I think that's the problem with this whole bull market that's lasted 10 years. I think there's just a lot of uh, I would call it uh, post-traumatic uh, stress dis syndrome when it came yeah. to 2008. Yeah. I think people never really got over that and they never really fully embraced that we're actually in a strong economy. There's still a lot of money on the sidelines. We're told that consistently. But there's this narrative that perhaps the market is overvalued. So that money is still kind of parked there on the sidelines, not ready to jump in yet. And that's crazy, too, because the market's <laughs> back up to the highs now and valuations are actually cheaper than they were back in September when we we're at the all time high. Mm. And if you look at earnings forecasts, you know, not only going into this year or later this year and next year, they're both going to be positive. Like I think it's going to be like 8 percent fourth quarter this year, over 11 percent for next year, which is above the average we had for the last five years. You know, the big tech names have carried this bull market over the years for a lot of that time, you know, they put those, you know, the, the markets yeah. on their back and have traveled on up. Where's the next growth sector coming from? Where, where should your money go to ride this wave higher? OK, good question. I think you have to look at the global markets. Um, the U.S. markets have been king now for a decade, and I don't mm -hmm. think that means they're not going to keep going up. But if you look at valuations across the globe, they're a lot cheaper. You know, talk about pessimism. We start talking about the international markets. I mean, analysts, right. like they don't want Rip to touch them with a 10 foot yeah. uh, pole right now. Um, so valuations come down a lot there. Um, you know, their GDP is still positive. But my thoughts are, you know, once China gets going and you're starting to see that already, their GDP mm. came in better than expected right. as well. We'll probably get a trade deal with China. Once that happens, that's really going to start to expand global trade. And everyone benefits from that. And the foreign markets, which have been a lot cheaper, are going to be a really good place to be. Very good. Ooh, good stuff, Ryan. Got a lot, lot in there. He plays. What do you play? Uh, I play guitar. Right. Rock music. I mean, I'm Beatles. rock. I, I played Beatles. a reggae band. It wasn't a very good reggae, reggae. band. Reggae. <laughs> great. Straight out of Jamaica, Ryan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ryan. Appreciate so it. Funny. Uh,